In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for forty days and forty nights, after which he was very hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to turn into loaves. But he replied, Scripture says, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil then took him to the holy city and made him stand in the parapet of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for Scripture says he will put you in his angle's charge, and they will support you on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Scripture also says, you must not put the Lord your God to the test. Next, taking him to a very high mountain, the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. I will give you all these, he said, if you fall at my feet and worship me. Then Jesus replied, Be of Satan, for Scripture says, You must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Then the devil left him, and angels came and looked after him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear God's family, dear brothers and sisters, we see so much suffering around. We see evil. We see wars. As we speak, there is a war raging between Russia and Ukraine. Anything happened because almost all the world powers are involved in this war, either directly or indirectly in this war. And we see poverty, we see struggle, we see evil in families, children being murdered in the wombs of their mothers. Now, in the light of the sufferings, enormous amount of suffering that we see around, we ask a question, why would God allow so much sufferings? Where are these sufferings coming from? The readings of this first Sunday of Lent can give us some insight and answer. The first reading taken from the book of Genesis, we are told where suffering and wickedness come from. They do not come from God. Sin brought them into the world. And whenever we commit sin, we too add both to our own misery and that of our fellow human beings. The second reading taken from his letter to the Christians of Rome, St. Paul tells us how God, in his wisdom and love, drew good and evil and turned the curse into a precious blessing through the suffering and death of his son. And today's gospel, we learn that temptations is part and parcel of human life, as it was in the case of Jesus, but that there is a way of turning each temptation into a victory as Jesus did, namely through obedience to God's word, to the plans of the love of God, love God has traced for us. Let us look at the first reading. The account of creation of, and of sin as given in the Bible, God wants us to learn some important lessons. First, all that God created, both man and things, are good. And secondly, God created them out of love. This is what is meant when Scripture says God breathes into man and put him in the garden, that is, gave him life and made him happy. And then thirdly, God wanted man to trust in his love. Uh, all, men, all man had to do was to accept the good that God had prepared for him, to trust God who had already shown how much he loved him. But man and woman should not pretend to know what was good or bad for him. That was God's concern, not his. This is what the Bible means when it says, God forbade man to eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil. Then the Bible speaks of a snake. We are all afraid of snake, of their poison which can easily kill. It is difficult to spot out a snake 
since he creeps so silently. It is from the way snakes behave that the man who wrote the account of the first disobedience got the idea of representing the devil by a snake. At no time was a snake considered a friendly creature by anyone. In a similar way, the devil has proved to be the enemy of God and of man at all times. Now then we are told that Eve was tempted uh, to just steal a fruit from a tree as the children drew from the garden. What, or that, what, that, was that the temptation? Certainly not. The meaning of what the Bible says is much deeper. The devil cheated Eve into disobeying God by making her believe that by eating the forbidden fruit, they would know as much as God did and become as powerful as he is. That is, the devil tempted Adam and Eve to become independent, free of God by becoming gods themselves. The disobedience of Adam and Eve amounted to telling God, well, God, you have created us and made us happy, but you are hiding something from us. You are afraid of our becoming what you are. We refuse the happiness you offer us. We shall find it by ourselves. We are powerful and wise enough to find it on our own. The seriousness of man's disobedience becomes now clear. Adam and Eve rejected God's love. They refused to be mere creatures. They wanted to become like gods, to be God, to determine for themselves what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad. They didn't want to be told by anyone. They didn't want God's plan of salvation for once for uh, happiness. The lesson contained in the account of man's creation and disobedience is deep indeed. In proposing it to us on this first Sunday of Lent, the church admonishes us all. The church is telling us, do not be foolish. Hasten to come back to God, since away from Him you will surely die. You have allowed yourself to be cheated by the devil long enough. Now, each one of us have repeated in himself the story of Adam and Eve. We have done the same thing of Adam and Eve did. By baptism, though we shared uh, the life of God, we, sh we received the life in the Spirit, God's own life, we disobeyed Him many times. God told us, obey my laws. They are meant to ensure your happiness. But we decided to go our way, to search for happiness, not in accordance with God's law, but against what we thought is good for us, against God's will. The devil promised us unending happiness in sin, in sin, and we quickly followed his advice. And what happened? Nothing true came of it. Jesus himself called the devil a liar from the beginning. Nothing that the devil has promised has come true. And what happened to Adam and Eve after their disobedience? Uh, and what happened to them also happened to us. The Bible says Adam and Eve realized that they were naked. The purpose of God in having these words written down was not to stress the shame that any person experiences in appearing uh, naked in public, but rather to let us know the total helplessness Adam and Eve experienced after disobeying God. Separated from God, separated from Him, they became powerless totally weak. This is what the word naked stands for. Adam and Eve felt ashamed to appear in front of God. The cause of their shame, however, was not their nakedness, but their foolishness and ungratefulness in rejecting God's plan of love for them. It is the same with us, dear brothers and sisters. By separating us from God, sin renders us absolutely helpless. It renders us blind, incapable of seeing God around us, incapable of walking back to God and even of conversing with Him. The second reading of today, St. Paul tells us that death entered into the world through sin. Everyone considers death as the greatest misfortune that can happen to a person. 
We should not misunderstand, however, the meaning of the words of God to Adam after his disobedience. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. To properly understand the true meaning of those words, we should bear in mind the following. First, rather than inflicting a punishment upon Adam, what God meant by those words was to let Adam know with a deep regret that sin brings death by its very nature. Sin brings death by its very nature. Once sin's sin had been committed, there was no need for God to condemn man to die. Death was inevitable, and the reason is obvious. If a person walks away from light, he gets into darkness. Similarly, by walking away from God, source of all life, man is bound to meet God. Sorry, by walking away from God, source of all life, man is bound to meet death. Away from God, we die. Together with God, we live. The words of God to Adam do refer to natural death. But again, natural death is but the symbol of what scripture calls second death or eternal death, which consists in being separated from God forever. This is the most tragic fruit of sin, the death we should truly fear. So what should we do? We should stay close to God. We should refuse to listen to the tempter but instead obey God's word, his commandments. Jesus himself would have failed in his work to save us had he gone about doing his work in a way different from the one the Father had established for him. This is what the devil tempted him to do in the desert. Time and again we find Jesus in the gospel expressing his determination to do the will of his Father in everything. He said, my food is to do the will of the Father who sent me. At the center of the prayer, our Father, he put the petition, your will be done. It is a petition which includes all the others and without which the other petitions lose their meaning. And it is the petition which Jesus himself made in anguish with all determination at the beginning of his passion in Gethsemane. My Father, may your will be done, not my will. It was this perfect obedience of Jesus to his Father that brought salvation to us all, and to him the glory of the resurrection, the glory of being appointed on Ascension Day as God and man, the Lord of angels, of men, and of all things. We can also look at the three uh, temptations in terms of what human beings normally face. We are tempted at the level of our body, we are tempted at the level of my, our psyche, our mind, and the level of our spirit. When the devil told him, if you are son of God, tell these stones to turn into laws, uh, we are reminded that human beings are tempted with lust and with gluttony, this inordinate desire for sexual pleasure, and, uh, and material food. And when we overdo that, we commit the sins of lust and the sins of gluttony. And Jesus is saying, man does not live by bread alone. Then he was, Jesus was taken up on the holy city and stand there, and he was asked to jump down, throw yourself down. He will put you in his angel's charge and they will support you on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone. That resembles the temptation that we face uh, in order to make a name for ourselves, in order to become popular, in order to be first, in order to succeed. The temptations of the mind, such as greed, such as uh, uh, desire for career, positions, power, such as jealousy because we don't get it, such as anger, upset with people because of their lack of support or whatever, which because of sloth, we face serious temptations at the level of the psyche. Normally the temptations at the level of the psyche are greed, envy, uh, uh, sloth, uh, anger, and sadness. And then the third temptation, he was shown all the kingdoms and said, if you fall down and worship me, I will give you all these. 
I will give you all this. If you worship me, the temptations of pride. I will give you all this. The devil tempts us at the level of the pride. When we are tempted in these levels of the body, the flesh, or the mind, the psyche, or the spirit, the soul, we know, we should know what is to be done. We should have the sword of the spirit, the word of God in our hearts to fight Satan. In fact, it is not we who fight, the Holy Spirit fights, provided we have enough the swords of the Spirit in our mind, in our heart. So let us use this lens to read the Word of God, to memorize the Word of God, to reflect on the Word of God, to meditate on the Word of God, especially the Gospels, the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and the life of the Lord Jesus, what St. Paul, St. James, St. John, etc. teaches us about Christian life. Let us put them into our hearts, like Mary, our mother, who kept all these things in her heart and pondered over it. If so, we shall, with the help of the Holy Spirit, defeat Satan. We shall succeed in the face of every temptation. And so we pray, Father, we thank you for having sent your Son to free us from sin. Give us strength in time of temptation that your plans of happiness may be realized in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Living be my yes, we are living Jesus, fill of the Living Jesus, living be my yes, we are living Jesus, fill of the Oh, fill of the lover of God, bring to Mary, help of Christians. Oh, fill of the lover of God. Jesus, living, give a yes, so viva, living Jesus, fill of the hour. Living Jesus, living, give a yes, so viva, living Jesus, fill of the hour.